News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Ladies and gentlemen, say hi to Josh Groban. Yeah? Hi, no, it's everyone. Okay. Hi. We've already, we've already gotten to know each other. We've told stories. We've chewed coffee cups. We've... Okay, so you've been to Canada many times before. Yes. Is, is this, do you enjoy Tim Horton's coffee when you're here? You know, I, I do. I mean, we, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a coffee snob. I mean, I, 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 like, I like Tim Hortons very, very much. I like to, to sample kind of the local coffee flavors in whatever country I happen to be in. Uh, for many parts of Canada, Tim Hortons is, is the business. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I really want to... Sometimes when it's this early in the morning and it's, and it's this snowy outside, really any kind of caffeine is fine with me. You know what I like about you is you're a regular guy. You I know, mean, you're sitting here, he's, he's like, uh, the girls, they love you. Okay, uh, well, and I, and I want to know, okay, this is a question that I, I was very curious about. <laughs> Thanks, girls. Um, now, right people, on cue. you know, there's so many women who love you, like, uh, you know, you're some sort of a prince, or so, yeah, I could, they just imagine what your life is like, you, you know, your, uh, your girlfriend or your wife would come home, and you'd say, hello, darling. Yes. How are you? I've prepared a bath for you with yeah. rose petals, that's and there's right. candles, and, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. What's the real Josh Groban like? I will chew your rim. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Nobody is going to get what that means. Of course they will. It's will roll they? up the rim to it's win season. It's roll up the rim to win season. All right. Yeah, you're, if you don't get a contract from Tim Hortons at the God. end of this interview, I that mean, it's going to be. That would be awesome. No, I'm 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 romantic-ish. I mean, you know, I think that the nice thing about. Uh, having a voice and, and singing and singing music is that you get to kind of express yourself in a way that may be a little bit more difficult when you're not on stage. So, right. you know, I'm generally, like you said, I'm just kind of, you know, I've had to learn, like the rest of us guys, how to, you know, be romantic and how to show those grand gestures. With the music, I've never had a problem kind of being up on that place and, and being poetic and being romantic. As a, as a, as a humanoid, <laughs> I, uh, I've had a, I've, you know, I've, I've needed to learn like the rest of us. Well, how so difficult is that? You know, you get off the stage, oh, do, 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 you know, That's, and everybody's how like, how do you know all my lyrics? I say, we love you so much, Josh. And then you walk out, it's like, uh, you forgot to pick up milk. Like, yeah. What the hell's wrong Nothing with you? Nothing ruins Valentine's Day more <laughs> than when you forgot to pick up the milk. What the did Valentine's you do? milk. What did you do for Valentine's Day this year? Uh, this year for Valentine's Day, I was, uh, at home with my dog. Uh, just kind of hanging out and being single and not, I didn't have any plans. I didn't have any plans on Valentine's Day. I, thank you. There's your, just like, you know, your, all pi your, <laughs> your pity makes me strong. Um, you no, have a little white dog. <laughs> no, I don't have a little oh, white dog. Oh, you used dog. to have a little white dog, didn't no, you? No, I never had oh, a little okay. white what dog. What kind of a dog do you have? Uh, <laughs> I'm not, no, I wasn't. You don't know my lyrics. <laughs> you don't know my dog. Um... I, I have a Wheaton Terrier. I've got a, right, I've got okay. a good, so it's, it's medium-sized oh, okay. man dog. Yeah, little white dog. <laughs> I have a little Boston Terrier. Do you? So you're That's a Terrier a man yourself. Uh, well, you understand. <laughs> I do understand, and I'm sorry. I, did, I didn't mean to insinuate anything by having a little white dog. I, thought, <laughs> I thought somebody said they saw you last time wearing a, you were in Montreal wearing a Montreal Canadiens jersey and walking <laughs> yeah. your dog. Well, any, t any dog in Montreal is going to be white. Because so, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> of the snow. Yeah. Uh, I, I count uh, this is your sixth album, uh, Josh Groban's new album, All That Echoes. That is correct. And uh, tell me about your new album. Uh, well, this this album came about because I had, like you said, I've been, been on the road, and we had kind of experienced a really great live energy on stage, and I had just made a record prior that was very uh, intimate and very quiet sounding, and, and after having getting uh, gotten back on the stage, I met with uh, the producer of this record, Rob Cavallo, and we just decided we wanted to make a record that wasn't afraid to kind of be big and energetic and dynamic again, and so we got into the studio, I started writing again, uh, and it was a very live atmosphere in the studio as well, all the musicians in one room, um, we really had a great time. What kind of music did you listen to growing up? My parents were pretty eclectic. My dad played trump jazz trumpet through college. Uh, my mom was an art teacher. They both loved music. And so they would play everything from Elton John, Gladys Knight, and the Pips. We would go see uh, classical music concerts in Los Angeles. Uh, and I just, I had the bug. You know, I just, I would walk away from those experiences just saying to myself, well, I'm, I'm a fan, but I also want to, to do this. I want to be the person to, to do this. So what did you want to do? To, uh, was it Broadway? Was it acting? Was it what you're doing now? I don't know. I think I was kind of um, blissfully disorganized in my own kind of creative headspace. I was, um, I just loved the arts. I loved performing. I loved music. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I think I assumed that I would do Broadway because my voice was, you know, as, as you sang, it was very da-da-da-da-da-da-da. 
And I just thought, well, that, that, would, be, that would be good for the Broadway stage. Uh, and I went to theater school, and it was there that I met, uh, you know, it was while I was in theater school that I met David Foster, and my whole life kind of took a, a, a turn. So your big break... What was your big break? I mean, some people say it was when you sang at, uh, at, Senator, at uh, Governor Gray's inauguration in 99, and then um, was that the big break? And then you were, people saw you? I, uh, I, yes. I mean, I was, just, I was kind of in the right place at the right time. And they say that luck is preparation, preparation meets opportunity, and I was, I was in the right place. I was, uh, I was working with a vocal coach, and David Foster called that coach and said, who have you got who's young who can sing? And, uh, and he sent him my tape, and the rest is history. Would you do other types of music? And if you did, what kind of music would you do? <laughs> karaoke. Do you guys like karaoke? Yeah. Because I... What song? Any requests? I for, love requests? the karaoke. I'm thinking we got mics up here. I'm just thinking, let's got a request just for Josh halt Rob this interview, Robin? and let's just... What's what is that? it? I will survive. I will survive. First, I was afraid. <laughs> and I was petrified. <laughs> then I was afraid. And I was afraid. Wait. That's the, that's the Bee Gees did that, right? No, that... No, no. No, no, that was that was Gloria Gaynor, I think. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, right, yeah, right. I got that, that all nice, wrong. Though. That Same was, range. That Same was, range. That was good. You ever... I will survive. <laughs> uh, you're not going to help you, me out at all in this one. You, well, this I was thinking that way could, to leave me hanging, bra. Do you think you could, bra? Um, do you think you could uh, you could sing a love song to me as if you're uh, as if we're like, you know? <laughs> da 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 da. <laughs> That's you know, mine. You know that old favorite, <laughs> that old chestnut. Why are you Hang on, I forgot the milk. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> now you're making fun of me. That's I'm nothing. sorry. But uh, I want uh, to you to tell me uh, how long it took you to get used to uh, women going crazy for you, like oh, they do now. Um, about, I didn't time it, but it was probably about seven and a half seconds. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, that's, that's uh, you just, you have one experience where somebody throws their hotel key on stage and screams your name, and you're just, you're intolerable from that moment <laughs> on. Um, no, I, I, uh, I, I was, it actually really took me by surprise, because I was kind of, you know, I believe it or not, I was a real nerd in high school. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, and so when, when I started getting that kind of attention, it was, it, I, it was, I was surprised, I was very flattered, but I kind of like, you know, was very shy about it for a while. I'm still shy about it, but it's, um, you know, but uh, I've, I've learned to, to kind of, to, to, to use, it for, use the powers for good uh, rather than evil. Okay, so I know your, your birthday is next, uh, is a week today. That's is right. It yes, it is. You're 32. What That's you got, right. Got anything planned? Just, um, <laughs> just, what's that? Alone with my dog. My fans <laughs> know me so well. Uh, we're going to count each other's gray hairs. You must have it, uh, but you have the potential for a girlfriend in every town. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. in every town, sorry. In every town. I thought you were just going to say, <laughs> period. Surely you have the potential for a girlfriend, <laughs> period. <laughs> thank you. Like, uh, people are, no, but these, gir these girls are, I, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that you're, uh, that you're single. Well, you know, I, 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 you've got, you've got to keep some, th you got to keep some things to, to, for mystery. You've got to keep a little, yeah. you know, okay. I, 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 I don't you. have, I don't have, uh, you know, I, I, I have I actually have a very hard time kind of meeting somebody serious because I'm I'm always traveling all the time. I'm always on tour. Um, it always so happens that I, I I find myself wanting to be in a relationship with somebody right before I'm about to play a hundred <laughs> concerts, and I'm a I'm just a horrible horrible boyfriend at that point. Not because I would ever cheat or anything like that, just because because I'm just not around. You know, and it's it's tough. It's hard to explain that to people. So uh, so when you when you leave on tour, how long are you gone for, and do you still enjoy it? I, I do love it. I mean, seeing the world, traveling the world, yeah. singing to new audiences, it's the greatest gift that I could be, possibly be given, but it does take its toll on your social life because even your friends, too, who are waiting for you at home who are just like, you better have some great airport gifts because we they've all unfriended me on Facebook. And, you're gone, uh, but you're gone for months at a time? It can be. Yeah, it can really? be months at a time. Oh. I mean, if the tour goes well, it can be you know a year and a half before you find yourself coming home. I think in like 2010, I was home for 42 days. So, uh, you know, it's... It, it does take its toll. How do you enjoy Montreal? I love it here. Yeah. I do. No, I, I love the food here. I love the people here. Every time I've come here, from, from album one, uh, I've felt the love here. And I, I noticed you tweeted uh, a picture of some chocolate-covered oh, potato chips. Yeah. Tell me about that. Where'd you find those? Those were in my hotel room uh, waiting for me, just in their, all their glorious evil. Uh, they, were, <laughs> they just were sitting there, and I, I, took, I ate one, and then I immediately went down to the gym, and then went back and ate every single chip. 
Uh, and it, there, that's delicious. That's the kind of flavor combination you get in Montreal. I have found Perfect. that your, your uh, ability to mix sweet and savory in this city is, is really fantastic. Last time I was here, I had something called blueberry sushi, which I'd never had before. And somebody said, oh, we got to take you out for the blueberry sushi. I said, really? It's just basically a California roll with blueberries. I would have never done that in Los, in Los Angeles. Fantastic. Montreal. Fantastic. Chips and chocolate, blueberry and sushi. What next? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Josh Groban and his new album, All That Echoes. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Featuring that, that song we both love. Make it a hit. I'm going to get... <laughs> requested, I, at, requested at your local station. Will I get, will I get co-writing uh, credits for that? Uh, next time. <laughs> okay, we'll hit you next time. Don't worry. It's a pleasure. Hey, always a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank Merci you. Merci beaucoup. Bye-bye.